Okay, we're gonna do a little video about powder coating bullets. It's my first video. Can't stand the way I sound on them, so um, bear with me. There's been a lot of guys asking about it. Um, not a whole lot of information as far as videos on it, so figured I would do one. Um, if you go over to castbullets.com, there's a lot of guys doing a lot of cool things like this with different kinds of coatings. This is where I actually got the idea from and um, and uh, yeah it's worked out pretty well the main reason why I wanted to make this video was to show the way that I um, rig them up for the powder coating I'm doing it a little differently than everyone else is and I know that that's been a big uh, big problem with with this whole process is trying to figure out a good way to do it um, personally I like this way some of you might some of you might not but it's probably the way I'm gonna do it for now on um, I'll put the link to that website in the bottom of this video if anybody wants to actually I highly recommend that everybody goes over there and reads up on some of the stuff there it's a lot of really neat ideas but basically we're powder coating the lead casting the bullets um, powder coating them <clears throat> then sizing them and then loading them on up just got a regular 45 cal round nose I believe it's 220 grain for my 45 ACP. Shoot it out of the 1911. I've shot them without the coating and with the coating and they shoot fine both ways, just a cleaner barrel whenever they're coated. So, and this is just the way that I do it. There's other guys that are using nails. Um, some are just setting them flat, spraying them that way. I wanted to get the bottoms coated, so that's the reason why I do it like this. It's probably a little more time consuming than the way the other guys are doing it, but I don't mind it. <clears throat> Basically, we get a piece of wire here. And I'm going to do this a little slower here since we're videoing it. Grab the wires, pull them out just to straighten it. End up with a little loop. Grab the loop, give it three twists, you end up with something like this to start out with. And you basically spread it apart, grab your bullet, stick it in the lube groove, like so, wrap it around, let it cross, grab your pliers, just as some. And I grab one, two twists, open it, stick it in there, flip them over, grab them, two twists, oops, do it again. Basically going to do it for whatever length you have available on your rack. Just have to go for it and see where you come out at. I think this one I'm doing 13 times 10. So it gives me 130 in this little oven, which isn't that bad. Figured I'd get a bigger oven later. Two racks, a little larger racks, and hopefully be able to pick it up to you know 300 or so, possibly 400 per a, per a thing here. We so basically just keep doing it. You'll have to do it 10 times, of course, or however many times you need to to fill up your rack here. I've got a couple other ideas on how to do this. I'm going to work on them next week, probably. I'm not going to get into it here. Basically, just grab, twist, pinch, twist, and just keep going. It's actually really easy to undo once you're done, too, which you'll see on the last video here. Let me just keep it going. It's really not that time consuming. I know that's a big concern with most people. A lot of people seem to be powder coating nowadays, so 
fairly new. I think people are still coming up with ideas on how to do it the simplest way. So you end up with something like this. Whoops, where you at? Got a little strand of bullets there. And this is how I do it. Let's see if we got this rack in here good. Okay. I always start out with the loopy end, first end. Grab it and give it a couple twists just to, because that's the one that you started out with. Try and get it to land like that, where it's flat. Give it a cut. So it's open. Stick it into the rack like so. Let's see if that'll zoom in there for you. Just to kind of give you a point to tie it onto. Oh, this is safety wire too. You can find it at the local hardware store. I'm gonna flatten these out because I poked myself pretty good. Then to tie this end, I like to just grab them with a pair of vice grips, like so. Twist it a few times, kind of hold the bullet still. And let go, and repeat. I'm going to go and finish up this side, and then turn it back on here in a minute. Okay. Flip her around. Got all these tails here. Kind of bend them out of the way so you don't poke yourself. And just start from whichever side you're more comfortable with. Just run the wire through. Pinch it. Let's get this thing adjusted here. Grab it and twist, just like before. You're going to do that all the way across. This one was a little long. I typically like them to be more flat, but I'm not going to spend too much time screwing with it. So we're going to do this all the way down. Looks like I'm wasting some of the wire too. I'm going to keep all your little leftover pieces because you'll end up using them for whenever you cut them too short or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and wire this up. Basically, same thing. Hopefully, that's visible. And I'll be back. Okay, so now we got this. We got them all rigged up. I shortened a couple of those. Want to be able to turn it upside down like this without any issues. Because we do got to coat the bottoms of them too. Um, Basically, from this point, some people would clean them, um, put them through acetone or whatever to get whatever finger oils um, off of the bullets with the thought that the powder is not going to stick to them if you have uh, that coating on there. Um, I stopped doing that and I haven't noticed any difference. So I don't clean them anymore. I don't clean my hands. I don't clean the bullets. I don't do anything. I just do like what I did here. Um, I haven't had any of it come off yet. It seems to stick to the lead really well. Uh, I run it through the sizer, sizes down, reshapes the bullet. No cracking, no, no flaking, no nothing. It's just like it's part of the bullet kind of. So the stuff's pretty cool. But basically now we got to preheat it. Now some people are saying that you don't have to do that to their findings, so I'm gonna mess with that later. But um. I don't know, maybe me preheating it is burning off the oils, allowing me to uh, not have to worry about cleaning it. But anyways, this is what I got here. Bear with me. Get this funky thing. Got this here. Little cheapy toaster oven. So basically what I do is I set it a little bit above 300. I usually preheat it before I put it in here, but I'm going to bake them, pre-bake them for about 20 minutes. Um, get yourself one of these little laser thermometer thingies. I've noticed that if I keep it right about there a little bit over 300, then 
I'm usually getting about about 350, 375 ish um, inside the oven itself. I haven't had any bullets melt on me um, doing it this way. I've had it melt just doing it a different way, but uh, but it seems to work. So I'm gonna get these preheated and then we'll do the next step. Okay, preheating is done. Now we can powder it. Pull them out of the oven. Go ahead and set it here on my rack. All right, I'm gonna take this here ground, click it on here. Now, I'll show you later, but you're gonna build up powder on this frame here. So what I've been doing is, before I load it up like this, uh, I'd usually use a new string there. Run a file behind it a few times to get some metal shown. That way you got your uh, proper ground. But I have been noticing that this powder coating isn't a very good insulator. It seems to get right through it. So we hit our button here, which is charging it. Check out our spark. Make sure we're getting some sparkage. You actually only have to do that once. They say to uh, do that once just to get the ground out of there so you don't zap yourself. So here we go. I'm just going to go over it. That's that. Now we get it put back into the oven, and I'll be back. Okay, timer just went off on the oven. It was in there for about a half hour at about 350 or so. This is kind of a piece of crap, so I think it's a little hotter on one side than the other. But that's what we get. So let me get these out and we will take them apart. Okay, got it out of the oven. It's still pretty hot. Probably wouldn't want to touch them. But I can go ahead and start cutting them at least. It's real easy to take apart. A lot easier than you would think. But first you got to get them off the thingy. So I just go around and cut these off like so. Get some sharper ones of these. Get them cut. Now whenever the stuff is hot still, it's still a little tacky. Not much, but um, it can scratch a lot easier. Like I said, it's hot. I'm kind of in a hurry, so pull them off. Otherwise you can just do this by hand a lot quicker. Get them stick into that middle thing a little bit, which isn't a big deal. Just wiggle it some and it'll come right off. Sometimes. Get them all pulled off here. See, it looks like I scratched one over there. Once they're dry, they don't scratch very easily at all. Oops. I would suggest doing this after they cool. Alright, get this out of the way. Alright, they've cooled down some. So, this is what we got. Nice coat. Good, hard, shiny, 
And to take them apart is real simple. Just hold them like so. Twist them two times or whatever, and they come right up. Do it again. And again. And so on. You just let them drop, they're not going to scratch each other. As you can see, it comes off pretty easy. Sometimes you end up with one of those ones that I screwed up on. Then they're ready for sizing. Okay, now we're gonna size them. Um, I'm running them through this, what is it, Lehman 4500 loop sizer thingy majigger. I've got heat to it. Um, I think most guys are not lubing. Um, that's supposed to be one of the benefits of this, but I go ahead and lube them because I'm running them through the machine anyways, and I don't know, just to be safe, because see that lube groove is the only spot where we're not getting any kind of coating over, because that's where our string or wire is. But what's amazing about this stuff is that you push them on through, and it doesn't chip. That's just lube that's there. But the paint actually, or the powder coating actually kind of kind of forms with the bullet. You don't get it chipping off. You don't get any issues like that. Which is kind of something that amazed me. These are white bullets, so you see all the little lubes and dirts on it and stuff, but typically, um, typically they come out looking like you didn't do anything to them. So I just do this. I'm using is it Jake's Red, I believe. Um, got it off him from eBay, and uh, like I said, I'm running it hot in here. And you don't have to lube them again, but whatever. So that's that. So here we go with the loading. I'm not going to get too into it. I'm sure if you guys have made it this far, you probably uh, know how a press works and all that crap. So, anyways, here we go. Okay. Nice little white bullet. It's like the little red ones. 